and welcome to a brand new video. So today we're going to be solving the problem where we have a string and it is filled of zeros and ones and we need to see the minimum number of flips. We have to do flips meaning zero to one, one to zero that will allow for mm, the first part of the string to be zeros and the next part to be ones. So it's basically just increasing the whole time. So in, uh, for example, as you can see here, all we need to do is flip this one. Here, we need to flip this to a zero and flip this to a one, or as you can see here, we can just flip these two to one, they're both two. And then here, you just flip these two ones to zeros. So let's see whether we can solve this problem. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're gonna use O and time by iterating through the string. But first, before we do that, we need to declare three variables. The first variable is the number of ones there are. And the reason we're doing this is because at one certain point, we need to track whether there are more zeros or more ones. Because if there's more zeros, then we're going to have that part of the string be for zeros. And if it's one, we're going to have that part of the string be for ones. And then otherwise, we're, uh, the rest of the string will be ones, right? Uh, so if we track the amount of zeros and ones there are, then we can easily deduce whether or not there are more zeros at that point or number, uh, more ones at that point. And then we need to obviously track the answer here. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the for loop and say, Oops, let me remove that. Say that if s star char at uh, i is equal to one, then z one plus plus else zeros plus plus. And I'll just do zero just for consistency. Um, and then we need to say if zero greater than one, this means that at the current the current point, the zeros are um the zero uh, there's more zeros than one. There are more zeros than one, and therefore that part of the string will be the zero part, because um uh, as you can probably tell, essentially we have two parts of the string: the zero part and the one part. So if there's more zeros at that point, then we want that part of the string to be zeros because we want the minimum number of flips. So if this is true, then what we're just going to set ands to plus equal one. And this will it, this is basically saying that at the current point in the string, there are more uh, there are more ones than zeros so therefore we are adding uh, we are flipping all of the ones before into zeros so that's why we're adding it to answer but we also need to set one to zero and zero to zero and the reason is because even though there might be more ones in the string than zeros, but that shouldn't determine our answer, right? We, uh, we should determine the placement of those zeros and ones. So therefore, let's say at this point, we count zero, uh, we count two zeros and a zero one. So, but once we get over here, we have one, one, and zero, zeros, right? Because we just cleared it. So uh, that means that, hey, we might be getting into the one part. And they see that, oh, there's two. And then and now you're like, oh, there's one zero, but there's still two ones. So this is still part of the one part of the segment. So that's why we're clearing it so that we can know when the one portion of the string starts and when the zero part ends. And then outside, what we're going to do is that we're going to return the answer, which basically uh, the answer is tracking how many times you flip ones in the zero part of the string plus zeros, which is basically counting. Oh, sorry, zero, which is basically counting the number of 
uh, zeros in the one part of the string, and that's what uh, what you had need to flip. So you know, overall, this basically says that if there's more zeros than ones in that part of the string, then obviously that's still in the zero part of the string. So add the number of ones to the answer. And then otherwise, uh, once you get into the one part of the string, then all we need to do is add the number of zeros in that portion. So let's run this with our three examples, and we can see we get 1t2, which is the answer. So hopefully this video was helpful and allowed you to understand how to solve the flip monitoring problem. See you in the next video.